Yes, I want to die. Well, I didn't know it was cash. So I don't want to bother people about holding my dog. So I'm going to go find a machine outside the museum so I can get my Stella. Um, Dave Matthews in his Germany interview has sold me on Stella. You can only drink so many beers. Why not drink Stella? And then Stella was the name of my best friend in high school. Her mom was very, very nice and kind to me when my mother was having issues. My dad was having issues. Uh, let's see. So it just went crazy. My mom, you know, she had her problems and she was supportive of me. You know, just a mom's love, a mother's love. And I guess people thought at times I was really, really mean to her. And I guess I was. I mean, I, I said some things that weren't so nice. Um, I was struggling with my, um, not addiction, but my, my mania and my depression. And as much as I went to see a doctor, and that's what I want to emphasize, I was, I was good there. I, I believed in my heart and soul I did need medication. And I continued going to a doctor who gave me the wrong medication over and over. And I... Uh, was taken into hospital several times and kind of used as a guinea pig. I was put in social isolation for four days in Rockingham County. And then they took me in another time at MCV and I called my friend, a lawyer, Russ. I said, they, he's like, just do exactly what they say to get out. You just need to get out. And um, anyway, I did ECT. It did nothing. It did not help me at all. It just made me forget my memory. So, um, taken against my will to, to psychiatric hospitals that are not set up well at all for psychiatric care. They're set up for crisis intervention, not for actual longevity of finding out what medications are working and what aren't. And it's costing the taxpayer a ton of money because people continually go back in the crisis care. But anyway, so, I don't know what happened. I mean... My mom died, and then all of a sudden, my daughter Morgan was living with me, and I looked over at her, and I said, you know, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving? I, I think we should go out to eat. And she looked at me, and she said, Mom, she goes, we're going to Aunt Jennifer's, but you're not invited. And I ag agreed. I was a little manic. I was not on the right medication, but I was trying. And nobody even, it's just like everybody stonewalled me. Nobody would talk to me but Morgan. And uh, sure enough, they went to Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I got no phone calls, nothing. Just, I did have an apartment because I was getting alimony from Jerry still, and he was paying my car payment too. And um, then, okay, I went across, I, I, I couldn't afford the car, and I went across country and uh, with Greg's car and went to the Gates Foundation and all that kind of stuff. And then I found out Hillary had gone behind my back and taken, see, I was getting his check so I could get my alimony because the power of attorney and all that. And he was in a nursing home and she went and took it. And it's like, nobody even told me, like she didn't try to work it out, like that I would have a place to live. It's just this anger towards me that I'm taking his money. And I'm like, yeah, but he promised me a place to live when I had these kids. And I don't think he minded. I mean, he was like, yeah, you know, a car. He would provide more if he could, but he tend to lie. You know, oh, I can do this, I can do this. He wanted to be the, the good guy to the point that he would tell you things that aren't true. But anyway, so Hillary did that. And also, Hillary had called the, the, um, the police. I had stayed at her house and was a little manic. And she didn't tell me anything about this, but the police showed up and they tried to put me away too. So this is my oldest daughter, Hillary, not working with me, just trying to arrest me. And, um, you know, I do look past that, but she's got some issues, definitely has some issues. You know, just the fact that she'd call and not talk to me about it. Um, got a poopy here. But anyway, I didn't really talk to her about it because I knew she couldn't. Like, it's just like some she's, I think her weight problem and all that stuffing of feelings and, and I should have gotten her counseling 
in uh, high school and I didn't do it. I was like really, really not doing well. But now, like I, I told her, I didn't, I didn't say, I said, you should just get your weight to be in a BMI, a healthy BMI range. So, you know, I don't want you to get diabetes. It wasn't really a, a anorexic category. I said, just, and she's, of course, she won't talk to me about it at all. She blew up and, um, I had, it's weird. It's like she wouldn't talk to me for a year and a half and it's, I haven't seen my grandkids and they love me. Like, grandmommy, grandmommy, we miss you. And I do fun stuff, taking them to the museum, things like that. I, I've been having nightmares about taking them camping and ice skating, things like this that I would do. And I told Hillary, I said, I can pay for Charlie to have guitar lessons and get Calista and dancing and I'll take them since I have a car. She got furious at me. Um, I told Charlie he could have my stereo and all my uh, CDs if he wanted to play with them. Because he's a very, I would almost send him a chess book on how to learn strategy in chess. He'd be that kind of guy. But I don't know, you know, I don't know what to do. She just totally cuts off. And she's a little bit like her father, Tim. He did that too. So that's why I think maybe she's got some depression issues, anxiety or something. And, um... She just hates me so much. But I took Mex I went over to the yard sale and then I took Mexican food over. And I did, she said take uh, Calista to the dollar store and get some lemonade so she wants to sell lemonade. And I bought her a skateboard and she said it was for her brother but really it was for her. And I was okay, I mean, you know, she's a little funny that way but. Um, then all of a sudden after all that, she said I endangered her kid's life and she wouldn't tell me why. And I was like, it was two blocks. And I didn't, she said put her in the back seat, but she didn't say hook her up. I, I thought it was to be okay that I just drove a couple blocks and you know, I, I, I'm a grandma, you know, I make mistakes. And she said, never, 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 never. I don't care if you're not even going anywhere, you know, make sure she has a seatbelt on. I would do it, you know, so those are the kind of things that you talk about. You don't cut someone out of your life forever and ever because they make a mistake like that. But she can't seem to comprehend that. She can't function, she can't, you know, she was trying to homeschool him and all I did was see him a bunch on the computer. And now they're, Calista, thank goodness, is going to public schools because she's so social. But um, I think she and Matt have some problems, you know, and I'm afraid hiding out is one of them, like her, her dad Tim did that too. And um, I don't, I, I'm really struggling to not ever say, say anything to her because I know how psychology works and I know me saying something isn't gonna make it connect to her. And I'm just trying to figure out how, if, you know, I know my sister doesn't wanna step in because she doesn't want Hillary to disconnect from her too. But yeah, it's a family issue, whatever's going on with them. The house smells like a zoo. She's hatching chickens in their sunroom. And Matt's got computers completely covering the entire dining room. They have no place to eat. And I, I saw him talking to Charlie. And he was telling him how the world is just going to be completely destroyed. And pollution's going to take over. And he's so negative. And... And he was trying to get Charlie to tell him how we were going to escape to another planet. It was very existential for, you know, a 10-year-old boy. And Charlie looked at me and says, I have no idea. But to talk that negative, and plus Charlie's sleeping downstairs in the basement all by himself. Something is not right here. You know, all the kids should be on the floor with the adults. And Matt's computer cave should be downstairs where he can go be by himself in the computer cave. But Charlie is, and I see, I see that, and it's not right, you know, something's up. And then he built a gazebo, but he's not even put in a swing set, and I know they need a swing set, especially Callista. She climbed on my antique chair and broke one of the arms of it after I told her not to do it, but she needs a swing set. So me stepping out, I'm, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm not sending any gifts anymore or books that I think that would be, like I've gone to Monticello and I got a book of all the presidents and I got some cards about the generals of, because I think Charlie would enjoy that kind of, but yeah, I'm, 
I've learned, I'm learning. Grandmommy can learn, just not say anything and just let them deal with it. And then if they come to me, then I, I can, and I'm okay with that now, but it took me a long time to get there. It took me over a year to figure, to, to let my heart go and they can stomp on it and then just kind of pull it back and put it back in my chest and say, you know, good luck. You know, I'm here if you want me.